Hello and welcome to Alex walkthrough video number three. My name is Robert McEwen and I'm very happy that you decided to check out my video. We're moving along now. Uh, we're still talking about some very fundamental algebra skills, but we're going to introduce two new concepts to you. The first is the idea of a quadratic equation where uh, we, are going, we possibly have more than one solution. So that's going to come up uh, today if it didn't come up before. And we're going to look at exponents and the rules for exponents. Now students often tell me or when they get this part in the course, they say, oh, you know, this is very easy. I kind of know this. Or, or they see the rules and like, oh, yeah, 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 I get it. Well, you have to know it inside and out because you're going to be given problems in economics. You're going to be given pr math problems in your math courses and you're expected to be absolute masters of these topics and you're going to have to do a whole bunch of different operations uh, and exponents are just going to be one of them. So it's really really important to nail the rules, nail uh, how exponents can be manipulated so that when you get more complicated problems uh, you don't make a silly mistake uh, and then end up getting the wrong answer. So. Per usual, I want you to get your pencil, I want you to get your paper, your booklet, uh, you can print out the slides, you can, uh, if you have an extra device, if you have a tablet, you can write your answers on the slides electronically and save them. Uh, saving them is optional, uh, but you should work through these problems with me, work through them together. That's how you're going to master algebra, that's how you're going to master mathematics, by practicing and doing it yourself. Now, uh, let's get to it. Let's take a look at our first question. The question is asking us to graph the solution to the following inequality. So what does it mean? Well, let's take a look at the slides and let's go into some more detail. So there's the question written again. What is the solution to this inequality? Well, what it's really telling us, and I'll, I'll show it to you, uh, I'll type it out, is find the x values or the values for x in which the equality is true. So uh, remember that if we're multiplying two positive numbers, the answer is also going to be positive. If we're multiplying a negative and a positive, the answer is negative. And two negatives multiplied by each other gives us a positive, not to be confused with two wrongs making a right. So we need to find the values of x for which this thing is strictly greater than zero. Looking at the expression, I want you to notice two things. Notice that if x is equal to negative six, or maybe I should say if x is a number smaller than negative six, then x plus six will be less than zero. And if x is equal to five, or again, I'm going to change it from equal to uh, less than five, x minus 5 will also be less than 0. Now in general, how do you solve this type of problem where we've got uh, two factors uh, and they're multiplied by each other? What are we going to do to solve this? We're going to create a sign diagram. And I had my students on the Econ 1530 final exam uh, last year, uh, 
my students have to draw sign diagrams to answer uh, questions that are a little more complicated than this, but are the same idea. So I'm going to show you how to create a sign diagram, and if you're in my class, you're going to want to be able to do it because I'm going to give you marks if you can do it too. So how do we create a sign diagram? Well, I'm going to start off by writing the two factors over here. And then I'm going to draw, well, maybe I'll draw a line like that. I'll have negative infinity over here. I'll draw a line over here. I guess I could put a, a matching line there if I wanted to. And I'm going to mark off these important numbers, the negative 6 and the 5. They're going to be important. And 0 might be important as well, or might not. So, I'll, But I'll put in the 0 as well. Now, if x takes on a value less than negative 6, x plus 6 will be negative. And if x takes on a value less than 5, x minus 5 will be negative. Now, if x is greater than negative 6, x plus 6 is going to be positive. And if x is greater than 5, x minus 5 will be positive. And I'll just, since I've added in those vertical lines, I'll add that negative symbol there. Now, two negatives, a negative times a negative is a positive. A positive times a negative is a negative. And two positives, a positive times a positive gives us a positive. So we can see here that if x is less than negative 6, this inequality will hold. And if x is greater than 5, this inequality will also hold. And notice that if x is equal to 5, uh, it does not hold because the answer will be 0. 0 times any real number is equal to 0. And similarly, if x is equal to negative 6, this expression will be equal to 0, and it, therefore it is not strictly greater than 0. Now let's put our answer into Alex. I'm going to use the circle uh, that's sort of hollow, and I'm going to choose uh, negative 6. Oops. And and I want my lines to be where x is greater than 5 and x is greater than negative 6. Now let's see if we've got the right answer. And we did it successfully. Uh, we use a sign diagram to make sure that we got the right answer. So these questions are a little more, uh, a little more time consuming, uh, a little more challenging than you might think. If you try and eyeball it, uh, you might get the answer, but you also might make a mistake. So in this question, we have a squared x, and it's equal to 50. It tells us that x is a real number. Uh, but what it wants us to do is to simplify our answer as much as possible. And I'll explain what the question means uh, when it says that. Uh, in fact, you can just see at the top there, there's something about this square root property. So I'm going to show you the square root property. The other thing to be aware of is that it's possible that there is no solution to this question. 
and it's also possible that there's more than one solution. Looking at the slides, we have the same question. I've just added in that little hint. Uh, Alex really wants us to use the square root property here. As a first step, I want to isolate x on one side of the equa equation. Now I've got x squared on one side of the equation, but what I really want is x. So I'm going to take, well I could just write it like that, I'm going to take the square root of both sides of the equation, but as I'm doing that, notice that if I had x squared is equal to 16, and I'll just use you know an, an easy number here, uh, x could be equal to 4, or x could be equal to negative 4. So I'm taking the square root uh, of both sides of the equation, uh, but I want to recognize that x could be positive or negative. So I'm going to have x over here, and I'm going to say that's equal to plus minus the square root of 50. Now you probably notice in saying, well look, I've got x squared is equal to 50, I could just take the square root of 50, and I've got the numeric solution. Uh, that's not what Alex wants us to do. It wants to test our algebra skills. Uh, there are reasons in the real world that we might not want to just solve away for this. When you get into 1540 and you're looking at multivariate situations, uh, there's not going to be a, just a simple uh, solution like the square root of 50 is equal to a number a uh, little bigger than 7. So what can I do to further simplify this? Well, 50... Um, I can do something with that 50. So what if I wrote 50 as 25 times 2? And I know that x is equal to plus minus. What's the square root of 25? It's 5. So I could bring the 5 out and leave the square root of 2, which of course is going to be an uh, irrational number. Now let's see how I did. We're going to go back to Alex and we're going to plug in this solution. Notice there's two solutions. So x could be equal to 5 times the square root of 2 or x could be equal to negative 5 times the square root of 2. So here we are in Alex x is going to be equal to 5, and I click on the square root symbol after I put in the 5 times the square root of 2, and then I want another, oh, so I'm going to start off by clicking this little button here, and then I'm going to make sure my cursor stays on the left hand side there. And then I want 5 times the square root of 2. And then moving into the second box, I want negative 5 times the square root of 2. And let's see if I did it right. And I did. So we have the right answer here. And there were two solutions. This little question that I've added to demonstrate the introduction to factoring. And so here the question, uh, we have an expression and we're being asked to expand it. So how are you going to expand it? Well, it's good to remember that the expansion of this thing is going to be 1 times 3 plus 1 times 4 plus 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4. Right. So you do the outer first and then the inner. Expanding, we get x times x plus x times 4 minus 1 times x minus 1 times 4, 
x squared plus 4x minus x minus 4. And we can collect the like terms, and we're left with x squared plus 3x minus 4. And this is known as a quadratic expression. It's an expression because it's not equal to anything. It's not a, uh, it's not a function, right? But we'll see, we'll see what a function is later. Now let's look at a more complicated problem. So uh, I haven't shown it to you in Alex. I'll show you, we'll put the answer into Alex later. Uh, but the question's asking us to factor the following completely. This is a tricky uh, factoring question. So to start off, uh, how are we going to find out what y is equal to? That's another way, uh, another thing that we're trying to do here when we are asked to factor it into its simplest multiplica multiplicative bits. Well, as a first step, why don't I factor out y4? And so we're left with 9y squared minus 24y plus 16. And you can see that this inner thing is a quadratic expression. Now how can we solve and factor this quadratic? Well, one method would be to use the quadratic formula. Uh, you can look up the quadratic formula online. Uh, that would be one way that you could go about uh, factoring this. Uh, but if I look at it a little more closely, I see that uh, I could rewrite this just a little bit. Oops. And this is kind of, uh, as we'll see, these are equivalent, uh, as we'll see in the next question. I can factor this out like so, where you can see that if I multiplied this thing out, uh, we'd have minus 24y uh, in the middle, 12y minus 12y, and the two ends uh, are going to get us uh, back to this thing up here. The trick is to see that both 3 and 4 are factors of 24. And when 3 times 4, we get 12. 12 minus 12 gives us uh, 24. Uh, that's sort of the secret. So let's see if it's the right answer on Alex. Here's the problem on Alex. So we had y, and I'm going to press shift, well on my keyboard it's shift 6, and I can automatically get an exponent, 4. I hit the right move key and I start, open up a bracket. And I'll do it. I just realized I made a little mistake over here. I, in my head, I knew I was doing it correctly, but I should have had a negative sign over there. Now, going back to Alex, here we are. I'm going to click the check button, and uh, we got the right answer.